Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Sports Update. We are here with third year coach Laura Beeman of the UH Wahine basketball team and we will be talking to her in just a little bit. But first in national news, the Final Four is set and it's going down this Saturday in Indianapolis with battle-tested Michigan State taking on the, Blue, the Duke Blue Devils in the first game and a rematch from last year's semifinal as Kentucky faces off against Wisconsin. Kentucky survived a tough opponent in Notre Dame, 68 to 66, as the game came down to the last possession, while Wisconsin advanced by defeating Pac-12 champion Arizona. Michigan State was upset. Uh, mis excuse me, Michigan State upset Rick Pitino's Louisville Cardinals, while Duke breezed past Gonzaga with a big run midway through the second half to end up winning that game, going away, 66 to 52. The winners will face off Monday night to play for the national championship. Meanwhile, locally, the Rainbow Warrior baseball team continues to struggle to produce runs as they got swept on the road in their Big West Conference opening series against UC Irvine. The Bulls continue Big West Conference play and face UC Davis in a three-game series this weekend at Les Murakami Stadium. LJ Brewster, Tyler Brashears, and Jared Arakawa are strong rotation, and the Bulls need to find another power source to produce some runs, especially in critical situations. The Warriors dropped to 9-19 and overall and 0-3 and in league play. The number one ranked UH men's volleyball team got put to the test last night in Westwood, facing the always tough number 10 ranked UCLA Bruins, who took the Rainbow Warriors to five sets. As the bench stepped up huge to provide the comeback win after losing the first two sets, backup setter Alex Jones came in to start the third set and the bowl started rolling taking the last three sets, 29, 25 to 19, 25 to 16, and 15 to 8, respectfully after dropping the first two sets, 22 to 25 and 23 to 25. The Warriors had three players with double figures and kills. As always, steady senior Brooke Sador had 13 kills. All-American middle Taylor Avril had 16 put-downs, and Siki Zarkovich led the Bulls with 18 hammers. The Rainbow Warriors compete again tonight against the same Bruins as they improve to 19-3 overall and 15-2 and in the tough Mountain Pacific Sports Federation. Last night's victory also ensures that the number one ranked Bowls will host a playoff game. And finally, new athletic director at UH, David Matlin, says the Warriors need to better their football schedule by scheduling games that will get them to the postseason. UH has a gruesome schedule this year with road games against last year's national champion, the Ohio State Buckeyes, and will also face Wisconsin on the road after an opening tough Colorado game on September 3rd. Matlin believes the Bulls need to go at least 500 in their eight conference games and then schedule up for the postseason. Makes sense to me. This is PJ with Hawaii Sports Update. And now with Coach Beeman. Uh, Coach Beeman, third year, uh, came to UH after a very, very successful career at, at a junior college. Three straight years in the uh, postseason, uh, coming off a 23 and nine record, 14 and two in conference, first Big West uh, conference championship since the 97, 98 season. Uh, just recap the season for us a little bit, if you can. It was a fun, fun ride this season. I uh, definitely ended a little bit uh, more disappointing than what we had wanted. Um, you know, losing the last two games in the Big West Conference Championship tournament as well as the WNIT. But when I stopped and kind of took a pause and reflected on what this team did, um, it, it really was an emotional moment for me, for my coaching staff to say, 15 game win streak. You know, we finally won the Big West Conference Championship, which the university hasn't done in a long time and, and so deserves to be represented that way. So overall, a fantastic season. Uh, the thing I'll say the most is, this team was more enjoyable than almost any team I've ever coached. Uh, the, the personality shown through, they absolutely loved each other, they played for one another, they truly understood the, um, guy, I don't want to say burden, but the uh, requirement of playing for the state of Hawaii. And they absolutely. really took that to heart and that was really tremendous to see and be a part of. Okay, now uh, even after all that success uh, so far and, and you know it's been a steady progression uh, there's something that tells me that there's still a little bit burning uh, uh, in that desire after la after this year's finish. Uh, yeah, absolutely. When when you have a great season and you have expectations to win your conference tournament, you don't. You don't go to the NC2As, and that's been your goal all year long. 
um, there's a little bit of a motivation to get back in the gym pretty quick. There's a, there's a motivation with these girls to not allow what happened this year to happen again. We have some huge players and pieces to, to fill. You don't replace a Shauna Lake Hoy, who you don't replace an Ashley Kraitiana and some of the other seniors. Um, but, but the returning young ladies are sitting here saying, okay, wait, we didn't take care of business the way we were supposed to. So there definitely is a little bit of a burning desire to, to pick back up, get going, um, and, and really just try to win it next year for these seniors that fell a little bit short. Okay, and, and that's leading right into my, my next question. Um, you lost four seniors, and Shauna Lake Kuehu, uh, Ashley Caratiana, and, and your two girls from Mount Sac, uh, Mor uh, Morgan Mason and Shalina S Segovia. That, that's a lot of uh, floor minutes uh, that, that, that you have to make up there. And uh, just first, just tell us how special that senior class is and, 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 of course, how special there is no other night like senior night in Hawaii yeah. and, and how special that always is. And, and then, uh, you know, who, maybe who's going to be in line to, to fill up some of those minutes uh, yeah. coming up? You know, I'll start with uh, Morgan and Shalina. You know, coming from Mount Sac, which I spent 15 years at and had great success and loved what community college does for student athletes that maybe aren't quite ready academically um, or quite, you know, ready athletically. And so to bring those two young ladies to Hawaii, they knew my system, they knew what the expectations were, and they had that winning attitude, you know, having won two state championships at Mount Sac two conference championships Absolutely. at Mount Sac. They knew coming in here what the expectations were. So to get them into our system fairly quickly and to have them so familiar was just a huge um, asset to our program. They'll be missed because of that winning attitude, because of that winning culture that they brought and we so desperately needed. Uh, with Ashley and Shauna, those two young ladies were the remaining two players from the previous coaching staff. Uh, tremendous recruits by that coaching staff. Uh, you know, Dana uh, did, did a great job. Yeah. And uh, those two young ladies, their first year, bought in immediately. And you don't always get that as an incoming coach to have players say, okay, we're going to, you know, buy into what you're selling. We're going to do what you're asking us to do. And we're going to do it with such a passion that it's contagious. Um, so those two young ladies hold a really special place in my heart. Number one, the first kids I've ever coached for more than two years. You know, I was at USC, but only for two years. Okay. Mount Sac to Juco, so I had kids for two years. Right. So to have Sean and Ashley for three years, and next year will be my first class of four year, that's really special for me as a coach to get to know young ladies over that period of time. Um, you know, Ashley bringing her culture, her experience to our program, her three-point shooting, um, her conditioning defense, all of those things were something that we really needed. I, I would say, though, Shauna Lake who was the, the glue. She was the young lady that, that was the face of our program. Uh, she's the young lady that, that everybody in the community absolutely fell in love with. Absolutely. Um, watching her from day one until now grow and mature as a young woman has been probably one of the biggest thrills of my career. Uh, it's wonderful to see her, see her with her little girl, Kiona, and just watch her develop herself and develop this little girl and do it the right way right. and do it with just such a passion and such a love. So, you know, Shauna will always hold, as they all will, a very special place in my heart. Um, like you said, we will lose about 50%, 60% of our scoring and about 40% of our rebounding with those four exiting the program. So, you know, moving into next year, we have to fill those shoes and we will not fill them the same way, I can guarantee you. There will never be another Morgan, Shaw, Ashley, Shauna, uh, but we'll do it in a different way. And, and a lot of that responsibility is going to fall on Destiny King. You know, she was the first young lady when I was hired that I said, I have to have you. You know, you have to be my recruit, my girl. Um, and, and coaches will understand to have a player that's yours, that, right. that you bring in, it right. has your back. Absolutely. And, and that's what Destiny has been. So she's going to have a big responsibility on the court, both offensively, defensively. Uh, but I think the biggest hat she's going to have to wear is that of, of a leader. She's going to have to fill those shoes of our captains and do things the right way, both often on the court, which she is more than capable of doing. Uh, next will be Brianna Harris, and sophomore this year. Uh, she has to work on her conditioning. That's something that we've battled all year, and it affected her play at times. But she has the potential to be a dynamic guard in the Big West. And I mean dynamic, the ability to get to the basket wearing people on her you know, her shoulders, her mm -hmm. back, shooting the three ball. She has such a pretty three. Okay. Uh, what we have to do is get her going defensively a little bit. And then our bigs, you know, Connie Morris coming back as a senior, 6'4". Right, right. Yeah, that's something you can't coach, yeah. and you love to have that size. Megan so Huff. Megan Huff, as, as a freshman and, and a dual sport player, uh, you know, splitting time between Dave and, and Rainbow Wahine Volleyball and us, uh, those players are really going to have some big shoes, but uh, 
I don't think I would want a different group of young ladies to kind of pass the torch to and say, okay, what are you going to do now? It's your turn. Okay. Now, you, you, you're sort of in a unique situation because uh, at Mount Sac, uh, with the success that you had there, you know, the, the, the talent pool in Southern California is humongous. Mm -hmm. And your name is there, and, and, and they've seen your success, and, and they've seen you build that program very successfully. And now you've come to Hawaii, and, and the progression is starting. So I know that you have your hand inside that talent pool also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how fortunate is it to, to have that talent pool, but at the same time when you have girls like Ashley, Karatiana, and, and Shana Lekuehe too, to, to blend in the, the culture and, and, and the local aspect of it also? I think you have to have both. Uh, you know, I want to keep the best talent in Hawaii home. I, for a lot of different reasons. You know, you want kids to be able to play in front of families. Uh, you want your fan base to show up and support your program. And we saw such a tremendous growth in that as the season progressed. Our senior night was just unbelievable. 3,500 people and uh, an event after that game that celebrated the, the multiculturals that we have um, a part of our basketball team. The haka. So, the haka, yeah, it was awesome. awesome. You know, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. It, so, the hula, yeah, all yeah, of it. All is, of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been here for 19 years and you know, there is no place like Hawaii. I don't care what anybody says. Senior night is the best ever. It ever. is. It, it really is. It shows the love and it shows the spirit of, of Aloha, if you will. Um, and you can't fake that kind of emotion. Absolutely. You know, there was such emotion on that court afterwards between the seniors being emotional with just playing their last game on that court and not saying goodbye, but just saying hello to a new chapter. Um, it was a really, really special night, a very emotional night for all of us. Uh, you know, particularly when Shauna walked up to me and, and was just sobbing, and it was just those tears of love and, and uh, you know, being grateful. And me, the same thing, just lump in my throat and, and crying so hard I couldn't even say anything to her other than, you know, nod my head. And, and, and just having that really legitimate, vulnerable moment uh, between a coach and a player, and, and that's what senior night represents in Hawaii, as you know. So um, I don't look forward to senior nights because it means I have to turn <laughs> turn a new page, uh, but I absolutely love what the night represents and, and the community. So wanting to keep Hawaii players home, that's so special for them. Um, definitely knowing California and the West Coast as well as we do has been very, very crucial to our recruiting and being able to walk into multiple gyms and say, hi, so-and-so, and hi, so-and-so, you're the coach of the head, uh, that, the, the coach of the, the best travel ball, you know, teams around, that's been really beneficial for us. So we want that international mix. We want the local hometown kid to stay here and, and play and be the next Sean Alley, as well as go on the West Coast and, and continue to add to our diverse program. And um, that's just kind of what it's about here, not only the state of Hawaii, but the university. And so we want our program to reflect that. Absolutely. And, and that's actually a, about a 40 minute plane trip to the big island in uh, mm -hmm. Ko Koanaino over there <laughs> and uh, the girls over there. But I, I, is there anybody on the mainland that you can speak about who, uh, you know, uh, might be coming to uh, Hawaii? You know, we have only signed one young lady, so she's the only one that I can talk about, Olivia okay. Crawford out of Washington, okay. uh, point guard, uh, shoots the three ball very, very well, is going to be able to defend very well. Uh, 4.0 student, very involved with both ROTC and the leadership groups on, at her school. Um, great, great young lady. Really looking forward to seeing her growth development, not only as a basketball player, but as a person over her four years. So uh, truly excited to see her development. Other than that, as you know, I can't talk about recruits. Right. Um, I wish I could, right. uh, but I can't. So I will just tell you that we are you know, shaking the bushes and rattling the trees to find the best fit for Hawaii. It's not just the, the talent, it's, uh, it's the character. And we want to win the right way. We want to win and make the state of Hawaii proud. And so when we bring somebody in, that's the first thing we look at is their character. And, and it, our, our personality is going to match. You know, are we going to have kids that like each other? Um, because that's what made this team so spectacular was they legitimately liked each other, respected each other, dealt with conflict. You don't get that often as a coach, particularly dealing with women. And I, I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get a group like that, it's, it's fun. Uh, and so I, I hope that we can continue that. Okay. If you're just joining us, we are here with uh, UH head basketball women's coach, Laura Beeman. We're going to take a break. And when we come back on the other side, we'll be talking about some of the uh, lower class, I mean, uh, younger class members, freshmen and sophomores about to see some playing time coming up this year on the other side. Hawaii Sports Update. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina. 
president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tank Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right, what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week, we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Hawaii Sports Update. We are here with Coach of the Year, Big West Coach of the Year, Laura Beeman. I forgot to put that in the introduction. I, my apologies, no Coach, but that, that is very important because she was the Coach of the Year. And uh, we're just talking uh, UH women's basketball. Uh, you have four seniors gone and, and who's going to fill the shoes. Um, let's, well, my, personally, me, uh, Brianna Harris's last game and, and from the development of her from the first game to the last, and I pretty much watched almost every game, not everyone, but just amazing. Can, can you tell me about her development and, and how towards the end of the year, I mean, was she really like a junior in that last game? You know, that was the challenge we gave all of our lower class, uh, is, okay, you're no longer freshmen, you're sophomores now, you're no longer sophomores, you're juniors, and so on and so forth. And Brianna is capable of that big game any night. What stops Bree is Bree. She has a tendency to get very nervous. She puts a lot of pressure on herself, and then she's unable to perform at the level at which she's capable. It's something that we're working on. Um, she's very aware of that, so it's something that I think once you're aware, then you can start to do some things about it. Uh, the other issue is she's got to get in better shape, and she probably, Coach, don't say that on TV. <laughs> don't. It yeah. is what it is. People can Absolutely, see it. Yeah. She's got to get in better shape so she can play the minutes as effectively and efficiently as she can. She can defend smaller guards because she is so strong. Um, and, and when she gets tired, she makes mistakes. If she gets her cardio up where it's supposed to be, she won't make those same mental mistakes. You know that. You've played Absolute, sports. Absolutely. So that's her biggest challenge in the offseason is can she commit to what she needs to do to truly be a Division One athlete and a leader on our team? No one can stop Bree if she takes it to that level. If she continues to battle and, and make the wrong choices and not take that part of her game serious, okay. she'll continue to be very, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not effective, you know, just, just, you know, kind of all over the map at times. So, you know, that's a commitment she has to make, and I think she will. I think she liked hitting 24 points in that St. Mary's game and, you know, was very, very viable from the three-point line for us. But again, her cardio affected her minutes, her fouls, and some of the things that went on in that game. So uh, I think she's got the best-looking shot on our team. Uh, she's probably one of the best athletes on our team. Uh, she's a lefty, which I absolutely love to guard. <laughs> right, so right. she has a very, very bright future. She just has to commit to the right things, and I'm crossing my fingers that she will. Okay, now, now, now on the summer program, do, do the girls also play uh, on, on teams during the summer, you know, like the guys, and, and what kind of conditioning uh, program do you expect from them during the summer months? We don't have the summer league like the guys do here. Okay. Uh, they used to, but they don't need more. We're not allowed to be involved with that. So if our girls go out and play, they have to figure it out themselves. And you can only have a certain amount of number of your players on one team. Okay. But we don't, they, we don't have that opportunity. So they play a lot of pickup on their own. They'll go up to the campus center and play. Um, I encourage them to play against guys anytime they can. Uh, once we get into summer, we can pick eight weeks where we get them for X number of hours per week where they can work with our strength and conditioning as well as coaches uh -huh. in small groups. Right. Uh, so my expectations for a Division One athlete, you don't get out of shape, eh, period. Yeah, you know, absolutely. not only for being a Division One athlete, but just overall lifestyle. It, you know, it's important for everyone to lift weights and do a little running and watch what they eat and do things in moderation. And so we talk about that. And as a Division One athlete, there's a contract that's involved. Let's, let's take it to the business, yeah, right? right? There's a contract. Absolutely. So if every summer you're getting out of shape and then coming back and trying to get back in shape, you're always behind the gun. And that's not what this team was about, nor do they want to feel what we felt in that locker room after that Big West Conference loss in the championship game. They, they don't want to feel
sealed that locker room ever again. And that's going to start now. So we've given them a week or two off. Um, you know, we're taking off to the Final Four as a coaching staff. When we come back, we're going to get in the gym. We're going to hit it hard. And I hope that the young ladies, the four or five days we're gone, get back on the track and do the things they need to do. Um, because we, we do. We do everything from weights and conditioning, plyometrics, uh, you know, speed and agility. Uh, then we get on the court. We do individual uh, skill development offensively and defensively. And, uh, you know, the big part of it is just the conditioning aspect for about four or five of our girls. Okay. And uh, w let's talk a little bit about Marissa Wembley now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she, she substituted more later on mm -hmm. in the season, and that could have been because uh, Morgan Mason's injury. And I have to go on record. I, I believe you guys would have won both of those two games if Morgan would have been a little bit healthier. Completely agree. Yeah. And I'm not going to make the excuse and say we weren't healthy, but healthy teams advance into the playoffs. Unhealthy teams don't. And you're on the road, so you never get officiating. That's just you have to bank on that. Um, when I put Morgan in that championship game and she didn't have the same speed, change of direction, lateral movement, couldn't get to the basket, I knew at that point we were going to have to have some younger youngsters step up and play incredibly, incredibly well. And more than that, Northridge was going to have to play subpar, and they didn't do that. Northridge played well. Our youngsters weren't quite ready for those bright lights. They, they played as well as they could, no fault to them. Uh, but without Morgan, it was a daunting challenge for us. Absolutely. And and Delana Sampton, um, mm -hmm. you know, her, her, her minutes also improved. When, when she was first coming in the games in the, in the first part of the season, you know, you, you can just see that raw and that eagerness. And, and then it seemed like the game sort of started to slow down for her a little bit, and she started getting to the proper positions and, and, and doing the stuff mm -hmm. that she's supposed to do. She is going to be a great talent. I think that we really stole one out of the, the Northern California area. She's undersized a little bit. It. We'd like to be able to get her into that power forward or, or four spot where she can play on the perimeter once in a while defensively, can do some more things for us from the pinch post or the elbow, where she can face up, take it off the dribble, uh, face up and just catch and shoot. If we can get her to do that because of her physicality, she's going to be a monster in the Big West, absolute monster. Uh, it's going to take some time to develop that. She's high IQ kid both on and off the court, and that's half the battle, as you know. Right. Um, incredible work ethic and wants to be successful. So she's a young lady that we actually may have to slow down in the off season and say, okay, take a little bit of a deep <laughs> breath. Um, but she has a, a very, very high ceiling, and we're really excited about her potential. Okay, and, and, and of course, what, what more can you say about Megan Huff, you know, yeah. coming from the volleyball team to the basketball team? And then, you know, uh, I, I watched her develop too, you know, and, and she developed into a very, very solid player for you guys. She was the uh, sixth, sixth person uh, of the year in uh, the Big West Conference. And, um, you know, looking forward to her coming back to sophomore year. Yeah, you know, I actually just saw Megan today earlier, and uh, we spoke a little bit about, you know, take some time off for your mind and your body, but then you're going to have to get back into the volleyball season, and they're going on a summer trip. She's excited about that. Uh, Megan could play professional basketball, in my opinion, overseas and potentially in the WNBA particularly if we get the opportunity to work with her on the perimeter. If we can get her on the perimeter a little bit, she has a beautiful stroke from the outside, get some more consistency, um, but, but have her able to defend a little bit of a bigger guard, which is what she's going to see in the WNBA, or the Candace Parkers mm, of the world that right. put the ball on the floor and attack. Right, she right. has to be able to defend that. Not there yet, but has the potential. So we're going to get a little bit more time with her now. And it, you know we'll mix it up with volleyball. We'll do nothing to affect what Dave has going on. We want them to be highly successful. Absolutely. Um, um, but I think, you know, uh, Megan, Megan realizes what kind of basketball player she is, and that excites her, and she sees the future. So we get her in the gym a little bit more than we had her. Uh, we'll be able to develop that young lady, and I think you're looking at a Big West Conference Player of the Year, not just one, but potentially two seasons in a row, if we really get her in and she works hard and commits to that. She's that kind of player, that kind of athlete. Okay. And uh, what, what can you say about Sarah Tolina now? Uh, she, she was really the first freshman who who was starting to get minutes in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 to me, she's sort of like an X factor. She she can do a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and a lot of positive stuff for you. What, what do you have to say about Sarah? You're right on. Uh, you know, she was a, a freshman that we knew we found something special with her as well. Uh, high IQ again, uh, very very physical. Um, 
works incredibly hard. She's a people pleaser, so she always wants to do the right things, gets highly frustrated with herself, which is typical freshman. Uh, her biggest challenge is going to be to stay patient with herself, to be patient with what we're trying to do as a coaching staff, to move her along at the pace at which we think is best for her. Uh, a lot of times our pace and their pace don't mesh. <laughs> they want to go much yeah. quicker than what, yeah. what is you know, the reality to it. Uh, she has a bright future. She'll work. There's no issue with Sarah. She'll work. It's, it's getting her to work smart. It's getting her, you know, her to understand and be patient about her game. Um, but you're right. Had she have not suffered the injury she did, she would have been our sixth man off the bench. Her and Megan would have fought for that position, I think. Uh, and she would have been our X factor. And again, another young lady who, because spent so much time off the court with that injury, she started to peak at the end. But those lights were pretty bright for her. And right. that championship game was a little bit much in the pace of it and the physicality of it. Uh, next year, she'll look back and go, oh, my gosh, you know, if I would have been ready, you know, what right, we've been right. so really excited love her um just a great kid okay now you already spoke a little bit about connie morris coming back and, and of course you can't you can't teach that size mm -hmm. but uh you know uh destiny king like you said she's going to be the glue to yeah. the team next year uh that, that's your recruit uh you speak a little bit about what destiny's role is going to be next year and um, what she's going to have to do to make you guys successful you know, I, I think her role next year is going to be what she's done the last, you know, two years for us, three years for us, is, is play one through four at times. She's going to have to defend some of the best offensive players inside and outside. She's going to have to be a beast on the board. Uh, the biggest thing with Destiny is she has so much respect from her teammates that she can really go after them. Uh, she has to learn that for every time you go after them, you got to tell them you love them twice as much. Right, right. And I think that's probably her big challenge. Right. Is her teammates love her. They adore her. They don't have a problem with that. Once in a while, though, you got to say, hey, add a girl, and I love you, and you're doing a great job, as well as get it together, or you and I are going to talk in the parking lot. You know, that type <laughs> right, of thing. Right. So, uh, you know, I think there's some maturity that way, uh, but Destiny's aware of that. Uh, you know, she's aware that the emotion that makes her great is also the emotion at times which holds her back. And that's a tough thing when you're a passionate person to, to understand how to bottle that and let it out when you're supposed to and then cork it back up when you need to. Believe so me. that's probably the biggest learning curve she has. As far as her assuming more and, and continuing the role that she's been in, going to be easy for that young lady. She's a winner. She wants to win. And I'll tell you, she does not want to feel the way she did after that game. It, she was almost inconsolable uh, after that, that, that Northridge game. And... Uh, we don't want to see that again. Yeah, well, the, you know, the, those are the kind of players you want on your side. I, I, when, I mean, when I played, I, I, I played with passion like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that's something that you can't teach. And, and that's something that when everyone else is, is around and you don't even have to look for her to, to, to let her know, hey, you know, these guys needed to get pumped up or something like that. And, and I've seen her court presence uh, on the court all year long and and you're exactly right she's a she's a beast she's a good kid yeah she's a, a good kid okay now uh, you know uh, you can't have a successful program of course you know without your assistance now mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your assistants uh Dakita Williams Mary Woolley and uh, Alex Delanian and of course Wendy Arnett yeah uh, you know, you mentioned that I was Big West Coach of the Year, and it needs to be broken up into fifths, sixth. You know, that's kind of how I look at it is. There are a lot of people that go into that award, and I'm probably the, the smallest part of it, quite honestly. Um, I am very, very fortunate to have a staff that is loyal, that is professional, uh, knows what they're doing. They do it on a high level. Um, the continuity of a staff, to me, is what continues to elevate programs to multiple championships. If you're continuously turning over, whether they want to get back to the mainland or have opportunities themselves, or maybe there's just not quite the right fit, you're always, here we go, we're starting over Rolling again. Here we go, we're starting right. again, yeah. So hopefully I can keep the staff together for one more year. I think that that's pretty realistic. And then after that, you may see an associate head coach like Mary Woolley say, okay, I need to go do something different, and I'll give her my blessing. She's a great coach. She's been a great friend. Um, very, very professional, very much a perfectionist at what she does, has high demands, uh, great background in, in not only basketball but psychology, you know, is a part of a lot of the team builders we do, really organizes the recruiting. Um, recruiting coordinator isn't the person that sits on the phone. The recruiting coordinator is the person that organizes what you're going right. to do. And that's half the battle, to make sure you're not missing kids. And she does a phenomenal job of that. Uh, she also does scheduling and, you know, bringing teams to Hawaii is not easy. Getting that guarantee money off and on the island, right. not easy. Right. So she's done a really great job with that. 
Uh, Dakita Williams, I've spent time with her at Mount SAC. You know, I've seen her grow from a very inexperienced uh, coach, just starting out really green, uh, to someone who's now maturing and finding her niche and finding what works. And, you know, she does a great job with evaluations. Love to have her out. Um, she's been a really big part of our JUCO evaluations nationally okay. uh, because of her experience at Mount SAC and, and just knowing what it takes to develop a two-year player. That's a different monster, as you know. Absolutely. Um, Alex Delanian spent some time with him at USC, and so he comes from a high level, and he's just a basketball head. You know, he watches basketball all the time, and, you know, <laughs> special situations. It was, hey, Alex, where are we with time on the clock and fouls, and, you know, give me some thoughts, and really someone that I could really bounce stuff off the sidelines. And I'm sure people noticed it was never just the Laura Beeman show. You know, Mary's drawing plays, and Alex is giving me input on special situation, and takita has got matchups going, and then you've got Wendy and I, who's the glue to our team, holding our team together, being that cheerleader, uh, making sure the girls are okay emotionally. Um, each one of my coaches really picked up in an area they needed to, and, and it was it was just a tremendous working relationship, and I think the team kind of jived off that a little bit. So. Um, very fortunate that I have the staff that I do. Like I said, I want to keep them together as long as I can. But if they get opportunities, which usually means more money, um, they're going to walk. And you can't blame them. Right. They want some of them want their own gigs. You can't blame them. Uh, but I'll definitely do my best to, uh, you know, spread some of the money and keep them here as long as I can. Well, that, that, that's how you know when you have a good staff when when they're in demand somewhere else. And uh, you know, there you have it, Coach Laura Beeman being very humble <laughs> and and giving this. Coach of the Year to the UH Women's Basketball staff. We're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we'll be finished up with Coach Laura Beeman, Big West Conference Champion, UH Wahine Basketball Coach, on the other side. Hi, my name is Seymour Kazimersky. I have a show called Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. Our show is about opening minds and facilitating conversations. To tell you the truth, I have no idea what we're going to be talking about. I have no idea who our guests are going to be, but I guarantee you we're going to have lots and lots of fun. Aloha from Seymour's World. Hi, aloha. My name is Chris Leesom, and I have host a show called The Economy and You. Uh, the show plays every Wednesday at noon, and on my show I bring on guests who are interested or working in the technology space. And uh, so I'd like you to come and watch the show and learn with me about all the sort of exciting things that we're doing in Hawaii to build and grow our economy ecosystem. So I'd like to say aloha, and I look forward to seeing you. Welcome back to Hawaii Sports Update. And if you just joined us, we are here with Coach of the Year and staff, <laughs> Coach of the Year, Laura Beeman. Of course, giving the credit to her staff, like always. Um, just, just talking about uh, uh, the success of last year's team and, and how uh, some of this, these minutes are going to get filled up with the people coming in and also returning. Now, you're 13 and 5 at home this year, but to me, more impressive, 9 and 3 on the road. Yeah. Okay, and uh, you know, th these the, are these group of girls along with these new recruits. Uh, are they gonna they're gonna need that road tough savvy. Uh, is that mostly attitude? Is, is that what you teach? It is. It's a business trip. Uh, sure, we'd want to play every single game at home if we could, but that's not the reality to it. You know, I've heard a lot of coaches come into the Stan Sheriff Center when they're playing us at home and it's, oh, how do you do this? This is miserable. You know, we're not going to recover for days. And I kind of look at them like, that's your attitude. You know, it, <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that's your attitude and that's your problem. <laughs> not to put it out there like that, but it really is. Uh -huh. We approach our travel as it's a business trip. We travel efficiently. You're, you're packing for two days because you're playing two days. We're setting our short-term goals. We want two wins. Um, and if you want to use travel as an excuse, then you're not the mentally tough athlete that I thought you were when I recruited you. So right. you can either get on a bus and drive across the mainland for five hours, or you can take a flight. Right. I would rather fly, personally. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, Hawaiian Airlines is awesome to us, and, and <laughs> they know the girls, and we get on the, the plane. Most of the girls sleep for yeah. probably three and a half to four of those hours. If they're not sleeping, they're either watching a movie or they're studying. As a coaching staff, it gives us the opportunity. I, I know for five hours what I do is I look at my scouts. You know, I'm going back over our next opponents and watching us, and it, it's, it's that time where it's uninterrupted time. I don't have a phone call. I don't have someone walk in my office. Right. It's just me time. Right. So uh, we try to give that attitude to the girls of you can make an excuse if you want, but it's not going anywhere. You knew what you signed up for. So let's be that road warrior. And this year we did a phenomenal job of winning on the road, which is not easy. Uh, you know, a different time. 
Absolutely. you know, different bed. Yes. You always have officials to deal with. Yeah. Um, and, and this team really just stepped up and said, it doesn't matter, we're going to play, we're going to win. Well, uh, just tell the girls, take it from an ex-minor league baseball player, oh. that uh, there's flying's not that bad. <laughs> I, I, I worked in the minor league baseball, the uh, Adelanto Mavericks. Oh, okay. The High Desert Mavericks oh, for, wow. for a year and a half. And, okay. and I know that travel, so oh, let me tell you gosh. what, that's... That makes our travel seem yeah, easy. The, the yeah, the Appalachian League. Uh, Oof. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about the schedule now. Tough schedule last year. You know, you, you had quality losses, mm -hmm. if there is a such thing. I, yeah. I know I know in your vocabulary there's probably not. To uh, Cal, Stanford, North Carolina, and Pacific. Mm -hmm. You know, And then you had some quality wins on the road at Colorado State yeah. and, and UNLV. Um, who, uh, what's the schedule going to look like coming up? Um, this year uh, and uh, you know is it are you gonna play it tough again for, for your girls like that we are and, and I, I can't at this point name the teams because right. we don't have contracts back and right. you don't want to put something out there and then people are ah, you know, I thought so-and-so was coming in but it will be very similar to what you saw this year we will have teams that will come in uh, preseason in the top five I guarantee that we'll have teams that will come in top ten uh, we'll have teams from big conferences. Uh, we'll open up and have the same format where we're on the road the first two games, uh, hopefully someplace in Arizona, uh, so it's West Coast-ish. Uh, come back and play in our tournament and then get back off uh, the island right before Christmas time. And that helps our kids spend Christmas with their families, get extra time with them. Right. Uh, so that's usually how we like to do it. And then we'll start going into conference. Um, Conference scheduling may be a little bit different this year. I'm looking forward to some double headers. Hopefully, mm -hmm. the Big West is going to do kind of a hybrid schedule, uh, where we may have some double headers with our men's team, and I think that'll be phenomenal for the fans and for the girls. Absolutely. Uh, so our, our schedule will be very, very similar as far as competition. Um, built to make us better. Built to get us a postseason bid if we can't win the tournament. Um, built to challenge us and definitely giving us some confidence in s some areas where we're going to need it. Okay. Now, as the progress continues. Uh what 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 does what what's in Laura Beeman's plan for for this program in, in the next three years? When 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 all these freshman girls are seniors, what, I mean, what, where where do you want to be? I want to win. Where's this program? I want to win. Uh, you know, I want to win. I I want to put Hawaii on the map such a way that we're a bubble team. You know, Big West isn't known for getting two teams out, but I want every year that. NC2A postseason committee to have to say, oh gosh, here's that Hawaii team again. You know, it, we hope they win the NC2A, or excuse me, their, their conference tournament so that we can just put them in as an automatic. But if not, we got to deal with them. I, I want us to be that kind of team, that mid major, uh, when you think of someone like a Gonzaga, if you will, um, the old La Tech, that team that was always there. You know, I think we can win conference championships a lot. Uh, I think we can win games both on the road and at home. Uh, so three years from now, I want to look back and say we've done this a few times, and we got ourselves into the NC2A. Eventually, it's going to be getting ourselves into the Sweet 16, and, and, and those are my goals. It's, I don't want to sit here and say, yeah, I just want to get to the NC2A. Right. Uh, you know, that's, that's not me. And right. People may say, coach, you're at a mid-major. You're setting yourself up for disappointment. I'd rather set myself up for disappointment than mediocrity. Absolutely. And do, do, do you feel that the way your scheduling is going, that that's a steady progression for you guys. Absolutely. One of these days, we're going to knock off that Stanford, if you will, that Cal, if you will, that UNC, and that's going to put our name really out there. And it's going to be the work of the young ladies and the confidence and that winning attitude that we're trying to continue to develop. But one day, we're going to get that win. OK. And uh, what, what, what's the most difficult part uh, about recruiting in Hawaii? Uh, you know, I, I know it's some problems, but, but what, what, what's the most difficult thing about getting girls out here? Yeah, it's the location. The it, it takes a really special kid to want to be 2,500 miles plus away from home. Um, they have to be very confident in themselves. They have to be willing to come and try new things and experience a very different culture. And, and, and really, you can't get in a car and drive to see mom and dad. Any place else on the mainland, you can do that. Right. So the location, you um, couple that with a little bit of budgetary issues. You know, if, if someone says to me, Coach, how much money do you need for recruiting? I want that blank check. You right. know, I want to be able to go to Australia, right. New Zealand, uh, right. mainland as many times as I can. Uh, we just don't have that, and that's okay. We'll make do with what we have, um, and, and we're doing a pretty good job of that. But probably the location and just the travel and the time it takes for evaluations, the money it takes for evaluations, and then to bring the young ladies back over here. Okay. Just a couple more things, Coach. Uh, who do you have on the women's side of the NCAA, and who do you have on the men's side in the NCAA tournament? 
Yeah. You know, UConn's going to be tough. Uh, Kalina Mosqueda Lewis is playing unbelievably well. She'll break the all-time three-point you know record before the, the the tournament's over. Uh, just shooting the ball lights out. And I think the biggest factor for them right now is Mariah Jefferson. She's grown up on TV before everyone's eyes, and she's running that team like clockwork. Um, I would like to see a changing of the guard a little bit, but they're too good right now. I, I just I don't see that happening. Um, and then I'll flip it, and on the men's side, you say the same thing. Yeah. You, you've got yeah. a, a Kentucky team that's what 38. Yeah. No, right now yeah. we're going for 38. No, and uh, I think that Kentucky men and UConn women are mirroring each other right now. With you've got professional level kids playing at the college level, uh, you've got coaches that are tremendous and know how to raise those, those kids' levels. Um, it would be great to see an underdog take it, but I, it's going to be a tough, tough build to make that happen. Okay, and last and most importantly, uh, April 12th, you guys' annual banquet. Um, Where's where is it at? Tell Alamo Moana Hotel. Alamo uh, Hotel starts at one o'clock. Uh, starts at one o'clock. Um, Eleven thirty will be the social. It's the uh, Hibiscus Ballroom. Registration will be at eleven thirty with the buffet luncheon beginning at twelve, followed by the program. And uh, the program is always really special. You know, we okay. honor the kids. It's all about the kids, um, and it's an emotional yet a wonderful, wonderful night. Okay. Afternoon. Uh, for all those interested, tickets are fifty-five dollars per person for the Rainbow Wahine Booster Club members or 65 per person children. Children are $29. Fans may also support the Rainbow Wahine by purchasing a table of eight plus two Hawaii basketball players and or a coach. A booster club sponsored table is $600 for the general public to the table and $700 to $900 for corporate sponsors. Fans can also make a $55 donation to a sponsor and a player. The Rainbow Wahine recorded its best season ever. All right. <laughs> we were here with Coach Laura Beeman. <laughs> wasn't quite Coach, ever, but hey, I'll take it. <laughs> Coach, it's been a pleasure. It's been my Thank pleasure. You. It took me a little while to hunt you down and, yeah, and get you here, this. but I appreciate your time. I know your time is precious. Yeah. Much continued success to you Thank and the you. Rainbow Wahine basketball team, and I, I hope to have you back and yeah. also on my radio show. Hope to be back. Thank you All so right. much. Thank appreciate you. it. It's PJ signing off with Hawaii Sports Update <laughs> with Coach Laura Beeman. Coach of the Year, Big West Conference. <laughs> Ahui ho.